Hi everyone, let's do something new. Um, I'm, I've been working on this character for a while and I'm almost done with it. And I've been going back and forth uh, with Substance Painter and Substance Designer um, to texture the character. And I thought I would share a few things and give you guys an idea of how, what my process is like and then see if you're, you'd be interested in having more content regarding Substance Painter and Designer uh, and maybe some beginner tutorials for that software. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty uh, familiar with Substance Painter. I've been using it for quite a long time and uh, I've been dabbling once in a while with Substance Designer, uh, mostly just doing tutorials, trying to learn it, but I never really it never really clicked with me even though i did the tutorials and you know I, I got the result that the tutorial gave me it it just it didn't set me up to then do my own stuff for some reason so and i think that's because i never really had a use case uh so i never really had a need to use substance designer until now because mostly the tutorials are using um brick walls rocky floors lots of cool stuff but I'm, I'm not an environment texture artist so I don't really need that that much um, but for this uh, character I, I really had a great use case um, and I had textured the character completely uh, this is not it um, but I wasn't quite happy with it like I got to like 90% or 80% that I thought okay this is great this is good um, but not exactly how I want it even though it looked good it wasn't the look that I that I really wanted um, so I and, and that's mainly because the basic materials that you get with substance painter uh, well they're not basic they're really great um, but they give you a specific look because they're built you know they're they're built that way um and you can you, most of them you can tweak to your needs um considering that it's pbr material so um you know you can you can change it within the pbr values and a little bit outside of that you can change some settings um and then with generators and filters and substance and just painting stuff you can you can do quite a lot but i just it just didn't quite get exactly what I what I needed, um, and so I specifically was struggling with getting a look of leather material that I wanted on this character because it's not even though the character will be lit in PBR lighting and rendering, I didn't want to have that 100%. It's not it's not a realistic character. It's it's a stylized character, and so I want the materials to be kind of stylized as well. Uh, very specifically, uh, I want it to look kind of a similar texture quality that uh, Overwatch has. And Overwatch is PBR, uh, as far as I know, um, but then they still have kind of a stylized look to their texture work. So I decided to jump into uh, Substance Designer. My cat is trying to walk onto my desk. Um, so. I decided to jump into Substance Designer and try to build that material myself and it took me quite a while because it was so very specific what I wanted to do and then I got it but then I had to see how to implement it um, and I don't know, uh, this video is, is not uh, necessarily to, to teach you guys how to use Substance Designer uh, it's just to show you this one little thing that I did in Substance Designer that I think is kind of cool to break it down a little bit and give you a taste of what you can do with Substance Designer for characters uh, and then maybe if you're interested I can do more in-depth tutorials um, let me just move my cat because he's in the way there he goes okay so let me first of all show you in Painter what the end result looks like. So this character has a bunch of texture sets. Don't worry too much about that. I will just um, hide most of them and focus on... First I'll focus on this strap and then I'll show it on a different use case. So I'll go to the parts and I'll do solo. Okay, so we only see that texture set. And then... Um, so I already gave it like a fill 
layer uh, which is kind of our our background uh, look so don't worry about that either um, and so what I did is I made a, a smart material and a smart material is basically a combination of multiple materials and effects that you then kind of export think of it like as a, as a, a PSD file as opposed to individual layers of the PSD file uh, so so I'm, I'm gonna drag and drop that onto the top stack here and this is kind of the the final look of the material um, the the diffuse detail and the the, the um, like the micro detail you see in the uh, the the specularity or the roughness that is just a placeholder that that's not part of this thing um, the what's part of this thing is the weathered effect on the side um, and it's a lot more complex than it appears to be so and I will go into why that is and how that is uh, but first let me add a mask onto this whole material and I'll um, do it with a color selection so that I can mask out specifically the parts that I want to show there we go uh, because that these are bandages and I don't know yeah we want to exclude that and it'll also highlight an issue that you know because the, this, the material that I made has some some it's not perfect so it has some downfall to it and I'll, I'll highlight those and I'll explain that um, so let's see what do we have here so basically you have one two three four layers uh, fill layers and the bottom one is I call it under leather and that is basically whatever is chipped away and you see below that's that so if I change the color of this you see um, that's that part um, and then there's no nothing special going on there it's just a basic layer um, then the next one that's kind of the important one is the, the top ladder and that one has the special generator that I made uh, which is kind of the core of this look um, and on top of that I have a paint uh, layer and the paint layer is there for me to edit um, the generator below so for example if I'm not happy with the look I, I have of where the chunks are or for example sp very specifically like I don't want there to be um, uh, I don't want there to be chunks here you know I want that to be clean because it's kind of in an awkward position uh, I can then go in and um, just paint it out it's a little bit slow there we go it's a little bit slow because there's a bunch of stuff going on above it and if I want it to be faster I can lower the resolution or I can just hide the stuff that's above it um, and I'm recording also so uh, and addition like similar to that I can uh, for example just I can add specific parts that I want so I'm just gonna add a piece here like that um so you know that that's the purpose of the paint layer i'll just hide that for now and then on top of that i have a um an anchor point and that's it's, it's an important element uh to the two layer layers above it and i'll explain that uh, right now so if i turn off the two layers above you see that um it doesn't look bad um it i have the general effect that i'm after but uh with two layers above it kind of looks a little bit better and it specifically looks better if I would turn off my uh, height or normal information so this is with no normal information on the generator where the chunks are cut out um, and if I turn those two layers off it I mean you could you might want to go for a look like that but it it kind of gets a little bit uh, vague as to what's going on here and what I did here is I added kind of a highlight on the edge and then I added a shadow fall off um, on the layer below it and that's tweakable as well um, so I'll, sh I'll sh that was kind of a mind fuck for me to really figure that out because I'm working with a generator um, but let me pause on those two for a second and just talk about the generator um, so this is showing just the actual mask generator now and so what is actually it may look like it's kind of a simple thing what's going on I'm just having like an uh, using the curvature and I'm having like a noise on the curvature and that's how I'm getting these cuts um, 
it's not quite that it's a little bit more complicated what's going on and you can do what i just described and it's very easy to do that but i wanted to have something a little bit more advanced uh, and to illustrate what's actually going on i will um, tweak some of these parameters that I exposed in Substance Designer. Uh, so I think the first one I, I will tweak is I will reduce completely the chunk bleed. Let's see if I can put it to zero. I oh, know I cannot put it to zero. So I, I will have to show you that in Substance Designer because I, f I failed to uh, allow, allow myself to put that to zero. I think I put it as a minimum to point two to prevent some kind of possible mathematical issue um, which we'll go into later but you don't have to worry about that but basically what this does is um, well let me just go into substance designer and show you so in substance designer what's going on here is I create a basic shape which is this little stick um, and this could be anything uh, you want but I found that doing this kind of makes most sense um, and imagine that this is the, the the blade or the knife or the piece of geometry that hit the letter and cut a part of the letter, right? And then what I did is I, I um, distribute it or I used the tile sampler to tile it randomly a lot. And you can't see it right now because I need to, it, it needs an input map. And the input map is the... Um, normal map so I'll just plug in plug in this normal map that I have and you'll start seeing stuff so what's going on here is it's taking this stick and it's basically tiling it throughout the whole texture um, randomly and also rotating it randomly um, and then I have a mask in it so that it only uh, so I, let me just turn off the mask where you see uh, if you're familiar with Substance Designer, you, you'll understand what's going on here. So if I turn off the mask, you see it, it's distributed everywhere. Um, so just undo this. Okay. So now it's only putting the sticks where I want it to. And I want it specifically to be put on this um, the edge, the edges. And the edges is it's generated from the curvature map, which I generate from the normal map. You can also just have the input be a curvature map um, which is fine but I wanted to do it this way because it allowed me some more control uh, if I wanted um, so I won't go too much into this edge select node which I'm generating the mask from but uh, what you should know is that I'm exposing the width uh, parameter which is in, in the generator in Substance Painter and it has to be well, it doesn't have to be sharp it can be kind of blurry but you know you have to have um, it has to be a, a clear mask so uh, you know like it, if it's if it's too gray I, I, I think you're gonna run into problems with masking it out properly so anyway uh, this is nothing special uh, then this levels doesn't really do anything it's just here as a placeholder or it's it's here as a connector node um, so, but here is where the interesting thing go, it, it starts happening. Um, I'm just going to zoom into this area, which is actually where the belt is. Uh, and then, so if you go to this node, which is an edge detect node, it kind of, what it does is it blends or bleeds all of these shapes into each other. And then there's a second one that is attached to that, which is again an edge detect node, and it basically draws an, another edge around the previous node, and then it, I, I blend those two together and I subtract it. And the reason I subtract it is so that I can get closer to the original silhouette. Uh, so for example, if you, if you take this specific point here, and you look at this one, and this is higher and th what this does is it pushes it back uh, so that it's much closer to this and you use you can say like well this is just like it's a pixel or um, or maybe two pixels it doesn't matter and it, it's true it doesn't matter on this scale but if your map is much higher resolution or your shape is a much higher resolution uh, then it starts mattering uh, and I want I want that I don't want it to to inflate that much uh, and so then what I do is I again blend um, 
this one and this one together so this one on top of this one and the reason i do that is again you don't see it here but sometimes you will have holes in your shapes even though it kind of looks like there's holes here that's not exactly what i mean um you you don't have it because you the holes that i'm talking about would be a hole that is in between the shape um, but because these are very thin sticks you it's impossible for for there to be a hole in there and you would have a hole um like well let me just very very quickly illustrate this uh well and i'll, I'll show you later uh, so but the important thing is is this is just a preventative measure to to well to, to prevent holes from appearing where i don't want it and that's it basically then it, i think there's just a blur on it that's very minimal i and I, I want if i want i can increase it um i haven't exposed this note but but i should and then um and then it inverts and that's the the generator um but let me go into another graph to show you a little bit more carefully what's going on so what we have here is um just a shape ignore these focus on this um, <clears throat> and or think about them as two different shapes and the result I'm, I want to get is where one shape leads into the other shape and I can show you this by rotating the top one and you see as it gets closer it kind of wants to connect like a magnet uh, and that was specifically the look I wanted to go for because I wanted these kind of sharp kind of curves connecting my shapes together uh, which is what you kind of get with stylized leather cuts uh, or uh, that's what I like to think you would have on stylized leather cuts um, and the the way that I have this as I previously shown this is exactly the same setup but it's a little bit clearer is that what's happening here is I start with a an edge detect node and the edge detect node needs to be um, big enough that it actually connects it to shape so if I lower this value um, it seems like it's still connecting <coughs> but um, the reason it's still connecting is because of the the roundness the edge roundness which is an important factor in the first edge detect node so if I would lower the, the roundness you see it starts detaching uh, it still looks like it's attaching but that's then because of the edge width so if I start reducing that and now you see the holes that you could possibly get. Um, so I put this this value. The first value is kind of doesn't really matter that much. Um, and you, you just want to get it close enough. And the second value does matter because the second value has to be <coughs> not a mathematician, so or a programmer. So so bear with me. But the second value has to be. Uh, I'm sure there's a term for this, but it has to be half of the first value added on top of the first value. I know there's a specific term for this. Uh, so it has to be, in this case, 12. If the first value was 1, then it would have to be 1.5 here. You, you get the idea. And the reason for that is specifically um, I found to get the, 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 the roundness to, to not go in. Uh, so I, I'll show you this. If I reduce it, you'll start getting to a point. You see where you get this. You get it going inside, um, and you you may say, "Well, you're reducing it quite a lot." Um, but then, if I would re reduce it more and more and more, and then you see, it would have to start getting getting higher. Um, so that's that's kind of the. the um, the mat that I found works best or is is most reliable, um, and then the the second edge detect node has to have zero uh, roundness and has to has exactly the same width as the previous one, and the reason for that is that I want it to I want the the, the actual shapes to match the original shape in its size except where it of course connects the the two shapes and that's where i have to subtract and that's if if this is not the same value as this you get you just get a different um so this is now thinner or thicker basically so it has to be the same 
as a previous one. And in my actual graph, I have this connected with um, some nodes inside of the parameter, so I don't have to set this manually. So that basically when I change the width, it automatically adjusts the roundness to match it uh, mathematically correct. And it also adjusts this node to, to, to always keep this the correct width uh, or the correct shape. Um, so it, there's not, it's not that complicated. I'm sure maybe there's a better way of doing it. I'm not a super substance designer expert and I'm also not a programmer. So I, I'm pretty sure that um, you, a programmer or someone with some better programming knowledge could create a node that does this a lot more efficiently and maybe is a little bit more performance um, acceptable because you know it, this is quite performance heavy um, so let me go back to to um, my previous graph here we go and so I have the mesh shown now as well um, so what I wanted to show you earlier was that um, if I turn the the edge the edge bleeding or the chunk bleeding to zero, you you see the individual um, shapes or the individual sticks. There's still a little bit of ble bleeding because it does the outline, um, but it's it's the bleeding that as the bleeding goes up, um, it starts connecting, and the the bleeding it's so the value by which it it bleeds more it goes in these weird chunks that i don't really understand why it's doing it but it's okay it's not a big deal um it does it's it does it's not supposed to animate so it's not a big deal um it may have to do with the re resolution of the, the texture so that's that setup uh it's it's actually quite simple so let me go back to um painter now so this setup is a is a exported as a generator well it's just exported as a substance and then imported into painter as a generator and this is the generator right here so it's important when you drag it into painter that you import it as a generator not as a filter not as a base material or something like that and then you um you load it onto your material by uh, adding a, adding a mask well, you don't necessarily have to add a mask, but you add a mask and then you click add generator and then, so this, this is generator and then you just select it or drag and drop it on, on top of there. Uh, and that's it, it's that simple. So I explained the paint and then now let me explain the, uh, the anchor points. Um, and then we're done. Uh, so the anchor points is basically, it's a way for me to take the information uh, of where the, the the edges of the chunks are onto layers above and then do stuff with those. Um, and let me explain that a little bit better. So if I turn on the edge highlight layer, which is just a fill layer um, and with a mask and that mask, I'll turn off the, the blur, that mask has a metal edge wear generator. This is another generator that comes with substance painter um, and this generator is it's I, I could use another generator I could probably make my own but this one works fine um, the, what this generator does is it kind of does the same It basically just um, it it uses the the curvature map and then it masks out the the places where you have a, a curve or a, a concave or a convex uh, piece of information so in this case let me highlight it uh, there we go so in this case it's giving us um, the actual edge of the the, um, the chunks and th that's not normally how it works um, but it, it allows me to do this because of the anchor so if I turn off the anchor you'll see that it only highlights uh, edges of the um, the mesh itself not where the chunks are and on the belt it doesn't actually show anything but that's because i have the wear level so so low and i want it low or as low as possible uh, to where it almost doesn't show uh, so it still shows here which is not ideal 
but uh, and I'll, I'll figure out a way to to sort that out as well i think um but i want it very low because i want it only then on the um the areas where the chunks are cut out uh, and to do that like i said is you have to add an anchor above your generator but it so on the layer where your generator is but that layer has to be below the place that you want to refer to that anchor i know it's a little bit sounds a little bit uh, confusing if you want to know more about anchor points algorithmic substance uh, they have videos on that explaining it just YouTube it it's it's not that complicated uh, but you can but you can do a lot of cool stuff with it like this so yeah when I select the sorry here the um, the anchor point which is in here then this is the anchor point um, it now allows me to enable um, the micro micro detail uh, and it allows me to to tweak it a little bit I can change i can select different curvature types uh, and then there's additional uh, use for um, amulet occlusion and stuff like that but in this case i only need uh, the curvature type and so then that allows me to to highlight uh, or to mask out the edge of the the chunks basically and then i blur that out a little bit with a filter so to add a filter you just add filter and then you select the filter you want and then that leaves me with this mask uh, which I then um, use as a screen, and uh, I put it. I put it quite low here, but you know, let me just put it high. And then you can do other stuff with that. I can, if I wanted, I can add it. I can add height to it, uh, or I thought I can add height to it. I don't know why. Hmm. Maybe I cannot add height to it. Um, don't know why exactly that would be, or why I cannot add roughness to it. Maybe it's because it's uh, a... Oh, it doesn't make sense. Eh, I'll figure that out. I should be able to add to add that to it, but I'll have another. I'll have a look at that later. Um, so, but let me go to the next one, which is a little bit more interesting or a little bit more complicated. Uh, so the next one kind of does the same thing, um, but reverse, where it occludes the let me just turn up the the height again here there we go so what what this one does it, it occludes the area where the top letter meets the the under letter um, and that was a little bit trickier because well essentially i can only select that edge i cannot select something that is outside of that edge. Uh, so I start with selecting that edge, which you can see here is what I do. It's exactly the same as the edge highlight using uh, metal edgeware. And then I blur that out significantly so that it spreads and it spreads all over the place. Um, and then I use a levels filter. So these are both uh, filters or no, that, this one is not a filter. Well, I think it's the same as a filter, but um, it's a sp specific one. And so now what I have is I have the, um, let me just increase this. There we go. So now I have, there we go. That's the color channel. Now I have the, the occlusion happening around the edge, but it goes both ways. So it goes on the under layer, letter, but also the upper letter. So I have to mask that out. And I mask that out by adding a fill um, filter. And in the fill filter, I again, refer to the anchor point and then i make that a subtract instead of a, an add and then basically what that does is it it subtracts everything that is um part of the anchor point uh, so then i i get the result that i need or that i want which is this um let me just reduce this again and the beauty of this uh is that it's it's uh, there's a, a few reasons why i have this setup like this, like a smart material with a generator, as opposed to a, a full material, because I could set this whole thing up inside of Substance Designer and then make, a, make it a material, or I could make it a filter as well. But the reason specifically I have this is I, I want the ability to have color information for the edge highlight and the, the edge occlusion, and I want to be able to, to edit um, Aside from 
tweaking the parameters which allow me to to, to give me a good starting point um, let's, let me just set it to uh, to one and I'll reduce the scale the width there we go okay and it allows me to to mask out areas which is with the, with this paint and the, the beauty of this is is that um, anything I, I do here it propagates I think that's the right word it propagates upwards because of the anchor point um, so yeah that this is this is the setup for my stylized leather it needs some tweaking obviously as, as you saw and um, I'm sure it can be improved maybe in performance a little bit as well but I'm gonna move forward with this on uh, this character and uh, probably use the same setup for metal as well uh, worn metal and stuff like that and uh, if you if you like this kind of videos if you like videos that are kind of talking more about substance painter and texturing maybe baking and stuff like that let me know in the comments uh, if there's interest I can do maybe a substance uh, designer substance painter kind of beginner basics uh, tutorial as well all right that's it talk to you guys later bye bye